Before I begin, I just want you to remember two things about me. First, I'm a computer science instructor. Secondly, I am an amateur chess player. Those two things combined together qualify me for a very important title. And that title is nerd. <laughs> you're, you're now ready to see my controversial and shocking first slide. After this talk, you may want to or be able to quit your job, drop out of school, play lots of video games, and stop listening to other people. Now, for you young people and for some of us older people, that may include your parents. I mean, after all, these guys did. Today, you are going to hear some truly amazing things from some wonderful people today. They are going to inspire you in ways you can't imagine. So sit back and listen and be inspired. I want you to accept a premise. Now, whether or not the root of that premise is based on your belief that human beings were created for this world, or whether you believe human beings have adapted to this world, I want you to accept the same premise. And that is you are a wonderful species. You are truly amazing. You have the capacity to adapt to things in a way that nobody else can or no other thing can. You have the ability to conceive of something that is not there and then figure out how to get there. You have the ability to see, to touch, to feel, to understand. In a phrase, you have the ability to create. So I want you to stop right now and evaluate yourself and ask yourself this very important question. Are you on the path to creating something? Because if you're not, you're dying. It may not be a physical death, although it could be. But it's probably a mental or even a spiritual death. I want you to leave today with inspiration to go create what you were designed to do. Now, I don't know what it is that you're going to create. You could create something truly beautiful. You could create something truly amazing. You could create something ordinary, a business process perhaps. In fact, maybe you could even go create your own company. But I know with every bit of faith in my being that if you go out and create, I will have a better society. My community will be more desirable. Why? Because I will be surrounded by people that are doing what they were designed to do. Now, the rest of my talk is designed to overcome your objections. Because if you're a young person, you're probably already on board. You're like, woohoo, play video games, right on. But for us older people, we start making excuses. We come up with objections. So for the rest of my talk, I'm going to try to overcome those. So let's take a look at this granite rock. Now, I'm going to throw a little existential philosophy at you, because some of us need philosophy to be motivated. So here you go. There are two types of things in this universe. There are those things that act, and those things that are just acted upon. You, my friends, are blessed to be one of the few things in this universe that have the right to act. Now, I grant you, I could walk up to the granite rock and grab a lever and shove it off the cliff. And for just a few moments, that rock would become very active. But at the end of the fall, the rock would just be a rock. And after all the elements have acted upon that rock, that rock would eventually just turn to dust. Do not live your life and be just a rock. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, I don't know what I would create. And if I were to create something, it would probably just be temporary anyway. When I was a young boy, about five, my parents took me to somebody's house. And there was, a, there was another boy there, a seven-year-old. And he was building this amazing house of cards. And it was this elaborate house of cards. And I was truly amazed. And this kid was so engaged in it. He was just really involved in this house of cards. But I had all this angst. I'm like, 
But, it, but it's so temporary. And sure enough, we learned just how temporary it was when in walked his baby sister. <laughs> we learned that day that there's an equal and opposite force to creation, and that is destruction. Destruction is easy to do, but creation is hard. So when you go out to create, there's an opposite force working against you to prevent that. Now, because creation is so hard, I want you to envision an analogy. Think of a giant mountain, and you're at the base of that mountain. And along the way up the mountain are all of the accomplishments of your life. And maybe at the pinnacle of that mountain, or at least along the way, is some great creation of yours. Now, you could spend your life lamenting about all the difficulty to climb that mountain, of all the struggles that you could have, of all the barriers to overcome, of all the preparations you need to make before you start. But I will tell you right now, based on my life experience, there's an absolute fact. That top of the mountain looks a whole lot closer when you're on the trail. So get off your butt and get on the trail. Now, I told you I'd talk about video games, so I'm going to. I'm a computer guy. I have to. There's two big video games right now in the marketplace. One of them is developed by a company called Activision. And Activision has created this franchise called Call of Duty. And they have this latest franchise called Call of Duty Black Ops. And this is a hot seller. And it takes a lot of people to make this video game. I mean, they have a huge development team. Now, for those of you profit mongers out there who will do nothing without seeing a buck behind it, I want you to realize that there's an opposite game to that. It's on the complete other spectrum, and that game is called Minecraft. Now, Minecraft is a ridiculous game if you've ever played it. It's made of just blocks. And it's really simple. The gameplay is just horrible. The graphics are ridiculous, but the game has something in it called creative mode. Nothing captures the minds of young people more than the ability to enter a world of their imagination and create something. Now, if there's 20 people working at Minecraft, I would be shocked, right? They have very little expenses, but they're enormously successful, which goes to show to you even your smallest efforts could be enormously profitable. Now, 100 years ago or so, we were all farmers. And we didn't have to worry about what we were going to be when we grew up. Because we were out in the farm creating all day long. We were constantly solving problems. Whether those problems were irrigation, or soil issues, or machinery, we were out there solving problems all day long. And we didn't need much accolade for it either, because at the end of the day, we got to eat. But our society has become more specialized over the years. We have become compartmentalized. So when you wake up in the morning, you get in your little box, and you drive that box to work. And when you arrive at work, it's usually in a box, a building shaped like a box. You get to your office or cubicle, And that's usually shaped like a box. And then you type away all day at this machine that looks like a box. And when you're all done, you check out and you go home. And your home looks kind of like a box. At least mine does. And then you snuggle up on the couch with your loved one and you turn on the box. (laughs) So it's pretty hard to think of how you can be so creative when we lived in this boxed life. But you have to. It's the essence of life. You must learn to create. Find something and create it. Now, I know you're thinking, guy, I just, I can't, guy. I can't because the carrot. I can't because of the carrot. Now, I don't know what your carrot is. Is your carrot that retirement they promised you? Is your carrot some illustrious job title you've been seeking for? I don't know what your carrot is. But I have some bad news. When you finally get there and that carrot is right there, guess what? We all know what's going to happen. What are they going to do? They're going to yank the carrot away. Stop chasing the carrot. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, I'm just too old. 
A 65-year-old man told me that a little while ago. He said, I'm just too old. My life is over. 20 years later, that man's 85. What could he have done with that 20 years? So are you too old? Are you too young? Are you too big? Are you too small? Are you too dumb? My grandfather died about a a year ago, and he was uh, in his 90s. And I went to visit my grandmother, and my grandmother had this box in the back room. And in that box were some pipes and some fishing string. And I brought it to my grandmother. I said, what is this? She goes, your grandfather, just days before he died, was trying to create a wind chime. I decided right then and there, I was going to finish that wind chime. So I grabbed my kids together. We got on Google. We figured out how to make a wind chime. Wind chimes are really complicated. You have to tune them and figure out how to hang them. There's all these different ways to hang them. But we created that wind chime. Now, this wind chime was pretty lame. I mean, it's probably going to fall apart. By the time I get back there, it'll probably be laying in the dirt. But two things came out of that wind chime. Number one, I found out that those pipes were actually the doorbell of my grandfather's childhood home. Second, my kids will never forget creating the wind chime at grandma's house. So you owe it to yourself, to your family, to your friends. You owe it to them to create something. Because the act of creation will influence the people in your lives more than anything else that you will do. In education circles, we have a a taxonomy called Bloom's Taxonomy, developed by Benjamin Bloom in the 1950s. He had this idea that instructors could be motivated to move people from a base level of knowledge up the pyramid to a higher level of learning. Well, in 2001, some educational researchers changed the pyramid. And they didn't change much of consequence, but at the top of the pyramid, they put the word create. Now, it seems rather obvious why they would do this. In my classes, I have students come to me all the time and say, Guy, I'm not very good at this book stuff. I learn better with my hands. You see, they're right. When we're creating something, we're learning We're engaged. You see, look at the bottom of the pyramid. Knowledge begins in the heart, a desire to know. And then as you move up the pyramid, you begin to apply and analyze in your head. And then eventually, you create it with your hands. So think this through with me. Heart, head, hands. In the software world, We use a word a lot. It's called iteration. We have this process that we go through called the iteration life cycle. We basically develop software. We try it out with a population of people. It's called beta testing. And then we find out its failures, and then we try again. So we try, we fail, and we improve. You got that? We try, we fail, and we improve. I don't hear you. We try, come on, we fail, we improve. We try, we fail, and we improve. And then we rinse and repeat. You see, you need to do what software developers do. You need to try and fail. Because great works of genius are not the accident of a brilliant person. They are the result of the perseverance of the average person. You need to create your iterations. You have no idea when one of your iterations will become your masterpiece. Sometimes your iterations will take a life on their own and they'll become something you never intended. So stop wringing your hands and start the iterations. Communities don't become great overnight. The community in which you live does not become great overnight. Palo Alto did not become the heart of Silicon Valley in a blink of an eye. In fact, 
a gentleman by the name of Frederick Terman uh, used to teach his classes and try to inspire them to leave the campus and go create something. Two of his students by the last names of Hewlett and Packard went by his inspiration and they decided to create something in this little garage you see up here. They had no idea what they were going to create. Computers didn't even exist yet. I don't even think the calculator was even on the horizon yet. But they came up with a concept together. And the concept was, we are going to go out and create a great company. So over time, that's what they did. And they built great things together. And they were not the only ones. They were the first iteration. There were many iterations after that. Now we have Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley in California takes more than 30% of the venture capital in this world. And it all goes to Silicon Valley. Why? Because they started the iterative process, creating one great company after another. That can be your community as well. And I don't know what it'll be in. I hope it's computers, longevity for me. But I don't know what it'll be in. It doesn't matter. If you take the inspiration you receive today and go create something great, you can begin that iterative process. Now, you are truly a wonderful creation yourself. You are amazing. You have the capacity to do wonderful things. We just don't know what they're at, who they are yet. So I encourage you, get out there and try. I would rather you fail a few times than to do nothing. Who knows what you're, it's, you're, what you're possible of, what you can do? Who knows? Now, uh, last week, I had the opportunity to go with my son down to Dana Point, California. And we became crew members of the uh, Brig Pilgrim, a sailing ship, for a day and a half. And while we were on the Brig Pilgrim, being ordered about by the first mate, uh, we got to work a lot with our hands. So one morning I woke up, snapped a shot of the morning sunrise, and I snuck away to a nearby building. Up on that building was a plaque that read this inscription, and this is what I'm going to leave you with. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things that you did. So throw off the bow lines. Sail away from the safe harbor. Catch the trade wind in your sails.